Mr. Keith Fletcher has been a C-level executive for multinational companies for 30 years, and he's now home in Savannah. And he's Chief Operating Officer with Spiros. Keith has an extensive skill set encompassing both technology and operations. Please join me in welcoming Keith. Sure. I'm Chief Operating Officer for Spiros. We're the largest technology services company in the region. And I'd like to spend a couple of minutes today talking to you about the cloud and cloud computing. How many of you right now are using the cloud? Almost everyone. That's terrific. It provides so many advantages over the old models that we used to have. Now, but really, what is the cloud? The cloud really isn't a thing. It's more of a place. It's where applications and services, networks, everything can reside there. Your data. Now, we've all used our email up in the cloud accounting systems up in the cloud. But today, everything is living there. The new PCs that are coming out are truly designed for the cloud. You're looking at the applications are so much more flexible than they used to be. They reach out and grab more, fu more functionality, more capabilities from the cloud than you would normally have had if it was just installed on your machine standalone. The cloud is keeping our things permanently updated. You have shared storage. So now your files are accessible to you everywhere. You can go home, your files are still there for you. You can be on the road, they're there on your tablet. Obviously, just from that, your productivity has improved. But also, your experience with technology is being improved by the cloud. Your information is accessible on all devices. You're not tied any longer to just your computer in your office or your PC at home. Your tablet, your phone, your iPad, your Mac, everything. Your applications, your data are available. And today's PCs are really becoming more cloud-centric. This makes the cloud make even more business sense. Now, but the cloud itself, looking at scalability, when all of you started with the cloud, were you the same size? Were you doing the same things when you started? The cloud lets you scale and grow. If you add people, you don't have to go and buy more equipment any longer. You can just increase your licenses or perhaps just use more. The cloud is much more reliable. You're looking at, instead of having to have your systems living in your office where you have to maintain them, now you have professional teams maintaining the infrastructure, maintaining your applications. We're looking security. We've all heard about everything that's been hacked. The federal government, Target, everyone. So everyone is a target and everyone is subject to getting your data taken. But imagine if you had to protect it all on your own if it was sitting in your office and you have to protect your customer's credit card information yourself, if you had to protect your patient information if you're doctors, you had to pay all the money for experts, you had to buy all the perfect equipment to make sure that these people who've even been able to breach the federal government, you've done everything possible to protect that information because that's your responsibility. In the cloud, your provider is responsible for that. They have professionals 
handling security, doing that for you, so you don't have to worry about it. As with today's PCs being designed to work with the cloud, the cloud is where the productivity is being provided from. You're getting your information, your data, your applications. You're getting a continuous, consistent experience. How many of you use your smartphone for business? How many of you use it for more than just email? You can now get at your information and your applications on your smartphone, let alone a tablet, let alone your Mac at home. Or, worse comes to worse, the business office at a hotel if you have to. Everything is available to you and you can be productive and you can work because we've all put so much of our applications into the cloud. This obviously has made us all more productive, meaning it's making good business sense. Now we all just talked about the cloud generically, but there's a lot out there that calls itself the cloud. It seems like almost every day you hear about a new cloud something, a new cloud person, application, provider. I want to spend a few, definitely a few more minutes talking about what the right cloud solution should look like. We've all put individual applications, we do things, but uh, enormous numbers of businesses now are moving their entire computing environment into the cloud. When you do that, you want to make sure that you're going to be living on your own servers, your own environment. You're not sharing it with someone else. And if you're going to depend on the applications, on the cloud to do business, you need to make sure you have a dedicated team to support you. Not just to tell you that, yes, the cloud is up, the cloud is down, we'll take care of it. But someone that will help you if, some, if something doesn't work. If you have put your environment in the cloud and you're running your accounting system up there, all of a sudden that stops working, it doesn't do a lot of good for you. Someone says, no problem, the server's running. You need to have someone that will help you with, you need to have someone that will help you with your application. Can you get your accounting system back up and running? Can you get your customer relationship system back up and running? Your shipping system? You need a dedicated team that understands what you need if you're going to be moving into the cloud. And the right cloud will provide that. Now a secure environment. Because the cloud can be anywhere, first question you should ask yourself, where is it? Is it here in the United States? Is it in Atlanta? Is it in Colorado? Is it in Costa Rica? Is it in England? Where is it? That's your very first question because if your cloud that you're using isn't even in this country, what laws is it subject to? What security is wrapped around it? What recourse do you have if something happens? Everything about security and a secure environment starts with <coughs> trusting the people that are running it. So you need to know who it is and where it is. So you can trust that what you are putting, which is your business, <coughs> into the cloud, that you can trust that they will be there for you and that application that you've selected and that provider you have selected knows how important it is and will be there. Now, how many of us buy things and we don't know how much they're going to cost us? Any of us? No. You need to be able to predict the cost of this. There are clouds that absolutely will give you a fixed price, no problems, no questions asked. Then there are some that will also charge you how much you use it for every second you're on, for every minute you're using it, for every bit of RAM you use at a given time. 
That, may, that kind of a model would make it very hard to predict your costs. So when you're talking about a cloud, either one where you can run your entire environment, or even one that's just running an individual application, ask, will this cost be predictable? Is it the same every month? Because if it's not, it becomes very hard to budget. And if something should happen, perhaps it might get to be very expensive and you, not, and you might not even realize it. We all have systems in our offices. We've all had them for years. How many people do not have backups? Terrific, no hands at all. The cloud needs to have backups too. You need to make sure by asking, do they back this up? Do they test their backups? And are their backups moved off-site? Do they live somewhere else? If their data center goes down, will your application still run? Can they actually survive if a hurricane hits their location, or an earthquake, or a tornado? Will you still be able to function even if their primary data center is taken out? If they can't, well, that might not be a good idea. Along with making sure it's survivable, can they survive the basic things? Things break. We know everything breaks. Redundancy. Do they have enough hardware to keep running even if something breaks, if something stops working? If the power company stops delivering them power, will they keep running? Do they only have batteries so they can only last for a few hours? Do they or do they have a full generator that can keep them running for days? And what kind of bandwidth? Obviously, they're going to have a lot of bandwidth coming in if they're a cloud provider. But do they have it coming from multiple companies? Comcast, who's the sponsor here, provides tremendous bandwidth. But no matter what, you can't rely on just one carrier. So do you have, do you have something coming from another carrier? Do they? Do they have multiple carriers? Do they have three or four? Do they have two? How do they have their network designed to stay up even if one carrier has problems? Ask them. Then one thing that is more pressing and is newer, encryption. Do they provide it? Can you get encryption from them? Not just is your data going back and forth from them encrypted, but can you get encrypted files? Can they help you with that? Your email, can they provide proper encryption that satisfies federal regulations? As we know, any personal information that you have about your customers that's not public, you must protect. You can't accidentally send it out. You need to, you need to keep that secure for them. That's, that's now the law, besides being our ethical responsibility. Can your cloud provider, where your data lives, help you with that? Can they help you keep it encrypted? So even if someone manages to hack into your environment, is the data there, the secure personal data that you must protect, is that protected even more with encryption? Can they do that for you? Ask. That's something that you need more today than in the past. And it's going to become more important as we go forward, being able to secure your information and your clients and your customers' information. Now we've talked about, last minute or two, on the cloud, basically the hardware and the services. But you're not using the cloud, you're using the software that's running in it. You all run your business using software. For small businesses, you're probably using QuickBooks for your accounting. Massive businesses use SAP. There's all kinds of software, but that is what you use to run your business. Is your current software cloud capable? Could you move that into the cloud? New software is, almost all of it is, but how many of us could actually afford to replace our software? 
this is where your cloud provider can help you, or should, I should say, help you determine your current software. Is it compatible? What has to be done? Can it move to the cloud? Can they do an assessment for you to make sure that your old software, can it be run in the cloud if you want to? Can you move to a system where you can access your data everywhere by doing that with a cloud provider that understands it, that's important. Because if someone says, we can take care of everything for you, you just have to spend an incredible amount of money, maybe you have to think twice. But if you can, the right people may be able to help you move into the cloud with the software that you have now. Bandwidth. Every time we talk about the cloud, we're also talking about how do you get to it. That's bandwidth. There's a lot of us in this room that have been doing this for a very long time. And we remember when T1's very expensive, thousands of dollars. Now, Comcast offers 100 meg worth of bandwidth for a, for a few hundred dollars. Not much at all for enormous bandwidth. Get as much as you can. But as with your cloud provider who should have multiple carriers and multiple routes into them, you need to remember that if you're depending on the cloud to help you run your business, you need to have multiple routes to it. That doesn't mean you need to have multiple enormous pipes, enormous piece of bandwidth, but you need to have something for backup. That can be as simple as DSL from another carrier, or even nowadays 4G cell phone cards literally give phenomenal performance at a very reasonable price. Verizon here provides beautiful bandwidth, but you have numerous choices for that. Don't overlook that and don't forget that even though your provider may have multiple routes in, you need to have multiple routes out of your business too. One thing with bandwidth, there are lots of things out there that eat bandwidth that are not necessarily productive. Entertainment, streaming movies, television shows, Netflix, Hulu. It's amazing how much bandwidth a couple of employees watching the latest episodes of House of Cards can chew up on your network. <laughs> and while they're chewing up your bandwidth, they're not being terribly productive either, I don't think. <laughs> you need to look at blocking those types of applications, those types of entertainment services that not only they suck time for your employees, but they also consume your bandwidth. And this again is where sometimes your, maybe your cloud provider can help you understand how to do this, or certainly your IT team can help you with that. Now it comes down to, with anything that we're talking about, what does it cost? What's the total cost to own it versus stay where you are? Spiros has had our cloud here in Savannah since 2011. So I'm going to use our numbers. Obviously, I couldn't use anybody else's. If you're looking at buying a traditional server, installing your software, making it work. You're looking at upwards of $20,000 to get that in, to get it working, get it running, versus if you're gonna put a server up in the cloud, you're looking at $4,000, significantly less, 
and you haven't laid out up front all that capital that you could use for something else. And if you've bought hardware, server, all the licenses, everything else, it's only good for about three years before it's, it's old. You're going to have to go through this whole process again and buy it again. Somebody's going to have to come along and reinstall your software, make it work again, and keep, and keep at that. Now, in the cloud, it doesn't, ever, it doesn't expire. Your cloud provider, Spiros or anyone else, keeps their cloud current, or they should be. Now, your monthly costs. As we talked about earlier, you need to know what a server in the cloud or an application will cost you. Your traditional costs are pretty high to maintain something in-house. In the cloud, it's not that expensive. When you get down to the bottom line, you're looking at over the lifetime of using an on-premise server over its entire lifetime of what it can deliver to you, you'll be looking at upwards of $80,000 versus about twenty for a cloud-based application. A graphical way of looking at it, you're looking at the difference between almost four to one on total cost. Your monthly costs with traditional, because obviously then you're paying for more support, more licensing, more maintenance. And of course, your capital cost up front, much higher. You had to buy a good server. That costs money. Now we're looking at, these are numbers from Spiros. But even if you were to look at, for else, these, the cloud is much more cost effective. It has been talked about everywhere from Gartner to the New York Times. The cloud is more cost effective. It, will, it does save money if you make the right choices. Now, just in, before we start taking some questions, just looking at the points that I went over, looking the, with the right cloud, it's going to work with your existing systems and especially with the new computers that are out there. Your productivity is improved because you have access not just to your data but also to your applications from everywhere on every device. So you aren't tied to your office any longer. You're not tied even to your home office. It's much more secure. Instead of you having to worry about how to secure your data, you now have a team that's doing that for you. You know where it is, you know who they are, and their job is to protect you. So you don't have to worry about it. When you've when you have put things in the cloud, the reliability is higher because it becomes a responsibility of your provider to keep it that way. You don't have to worry about it. It delivers the applications that you need when and where you need them. That, even if it did nothing else, but your ability to work anywhere on your schedule when you need to makes cloud-based computing a great business decision. But it's also more cost effective. So if you're going to couple better productivity, much better accessibility, and higher cost effectiveness, it becomes a very good business decision. Now, a little tiny bit of Prosperos. Our cloud was brought up in 2011. 
We're scrubbing over a million email transactions a day, and we do provide true 7x24 support for everyone. We have a large number of customers in the cloud. And at this point, I'd like to take some questions.